It's time for Declare Your Independence with Ernest Hancock. Believe me when I say we have a difficult time ahead of us. But if we are to be prepared for it, we must first shed our fear of it. I stand here without fear because I remember. I remember that I am here not because of the path that lies before me, but because of the path that lies behind me. I remember that for 100 years we have fought these machines. And after a century of war, I remember that which matters most. We are still here! Let us make them remember. We are not afraid! Yeah, no fear, no fear, no fear here on Declare Your Independence with me, Ernest Hancock. Oh, today's a very special day, and we have a very special guest going to help us uh, decipher what's going on. we got Peter Schiff from Europac.com. He also has his own radio show, SchiffRadio.com. Peter, I got you there? Yeah, you know, it's actually Europe Civic Capital is my company, and the website is Europac.net. Dot net. Dot thank com. you, thank you. I apologize, because I'm over here looking at the gold chart, man, and it shooting up to over over 1680 then it goes down to almost 1640 and that's back up to 1655 that I want you to comment on what's going in in the market today we had it go down like 350 points and it's starting to you know play its games whatever but the point was is that I want you to come, we got a short time so I want you to comment on this we had the debt ceiling raised so my estimation was you know it's uh, gold and silver is going to keep continued trending certainly in the long term up because they're just printing more money they're not curbing spending but we have all of a sudden the 30-year treasury plummets treasuries are going down because i guess people think it's a flight to safety which includes gold but the, with us doing what we're doing and print more money and spending and not getting this thing under control you would think that they wouldn't think that u.s treasuries were a good investment but well, I don't know that anybody thinks U.S. Treasuries are a good investment. I mean, certainly, if you're buying gold because you're worried about money printing, well, then money printing affects Treasuries because Treasuries are money. They're denominated in dollars. So it doesn't make really sense that if people are seeking out safe havens, they would buy gold in Treasuries because the reason you buy gold is a safe haven from Treasuries. But I think you've got other factors that are lifting Treasuries. Central banks are intervening now in, in Germany, I mean, in Japan and Switzerland. So... Uh, you might, this would be, uh, central banks there could be buying. I think the Fed is buying, and I think there are some shorts, people who are short treasuries who are covering right now, uh, because I think there were a lot of bets that were made in the market on a growing U.S. economy, and people are starting to unwind those bets because all the economic data is showing that the economy is actually going into recession, not growing. And so I think people that were shorting treasuries based on a optimistic economic out- outlook are covering those positions, I think people that were buying stocks based on growth uh, in the economy are now selling because they realize that the economy is not growing. It's back, it's contracting. And there is no current announced stimulus plan to prop the economy back up. I think ultimately we're going to get more stimulus from the Fed and maybe from Congress. That's the wrong thing to do. It will ultimately make, uh, make, make things worse, but they're going to do it. Okay, now this is, this is my point. As I'm looking at this, you would think, as in the early years of the Reagan administration, um, interest rates, Fed interest rates went up to, I don't know, 15% or something, you know, 20%, whatever it was, up there. And the 30-year Treasury was at like 15% to get people to lend us money. But they're not having to raise interest rates in order for people to invest in U.S. Treasuries. And I'm wondering, is it because the euro is so bad, the European Union well, is so again, much worse? people are not investing in Treasuries. I don't know anybody who's buying them for 30 years. Why do the interest rates go down so much? Because the Fed is buying them. Ah. Because the Bank of China is buying them. Because the Bank of Japan is buying them. And because leveraged speculators are trading in them. But long-term investment demand, there is none. Nobody is buying a treasury to keep it for 30 years. It's just not happening. Okay, now this is... buying it with their own money. This is a conversation that I had with someone. I'm saying, look, you know, the Fed just comes in and goes, no, they can't do that. And it's kind of... And there's you know, legalities, and they're uh, you know, not supposed to, and all of a sudden, tell me what their obligation is and their ability to buy 
treasuries that yeah, is that they open? Do. They can buy as many as they want. They just print money and buy them. Nothing stops them. Okay, of so course, there's somewhere to track the that. There's somewhere yeah, to look yeah, for that. When you track it, you got to look at their balance sheet when they come out with their balance sheet. Now, it's possible they can be buying things off balance sheet through other accounts they might have in other countries in the Caribbean or something. Then you don't necessarily know who the, who the beneficial buyer is. But, you know, the Fed understands that it has to keep interest rates artificially low if it wants to if it wants the government to avoid default or a massive cuts in other government programs. Because if interest rates go up, we're, we're, we're sunk. So the Fed is going to do whatever it can to keep interest rates low for as long as it can, even though that's the wrong thing to do for the long run, Paul Colley. Okay, what do you see happening here? This is unwinding fairly quickly. And, I'm, you know, how much time do you think we got? I don't know. You know, as I said, you know, we, 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 might, we might make it through 2012. We might not. You know, maybe 2013 if it takes longer. But I think we're very close to a crisis. The, the, the crisis about the debt ceiling was a phony crisis. We, we, we're going to have a real crisis. But, you know, how is it a phony crisis? Not that I, you know, it's, uh, it's it a puppet phony show. because there was no crisis. There was no risk of default because they were going to raise the ceiling. No, we always knew they were going to raise the ceiling. You know, and then you have the left and the right, and the ouch, quit it, and it's a puppet show. And I'm just wondering who the puppet show is for. Is this just to extend it for, one it's more election voters. cycle? Yeah, it's for the voters. It's for Wall Street. You know, it's just to keep these guys in office. You know, sooner or later, fundamentals hit. I mean, I know you've been a uh, you know, big advocate of that over the years, and it's uh, it, it's refreshing to see how right you are, and uh, they don't care. You know, the, they, them, those, the talking heads. It's like CNBC's cheerleaders. Everything's great. Yeah, and and I, I've not. given these guys, I've told these guys so many times what was going to happen. They, they always, they never listening to me, and yet when my forecasts come true time and time again, they still don't call me up and say, hey, what do you think? They still call the same old sources who got it completely wrong, and they ask them for their opinions, and then they and then they repeat them as if these guys know what they're talking about. Meanwhile, I'm telling them exactly what's going to happen time and time again. What I say is right, yet they give me no respect whatsoever uh, with, with, for what I'm saying at all. So no, you I'm become like right. you become the media. Tell us about that. What kind of impact you have with your show? I don't know. In my radio show, people can listen to it every day on uh, shiftradio.com. You know, it's still mainly on the internet, so. You know, the impact is minimal because it's probably just, you know, Peter Schiff fans that are listening. You know, there are a lot of those, but not enough to make a difference. Oh, uh, I'm, you know, so now we have, it's uh, the speaking tour of Ron Paul Part 2. You know, what, what's your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, we got to get Ron out there. You know, he's running for president. Uh, so the more he speaks, hopefully the more votes he'll get. Well, I mean, what do you think the likely, I mean, you went, you were close up on this thing before. What kind of, uh, I guess, respect or notoriety is he going to get this time compared with last time? Because for the well, same definitely people, he's got definitely he's already got a lot more respect now in the race than he had last time. I mean, people still don't think he has a shot of winning, but he is taken more seriously, I think, in the media. Yeah, well, you know, and I, you know, it, it, I, I really see that the people, the young people, where I really had a lot of them, you know, close around me for years. I see they've lost all faith in the electoral process. I mean, as much as they support Dr. Well, Paul being up yeah, there. Well, there should have. I mean, what's there to have faith in? The process is, uh, is rigged. I mean, basically, because you've got a bunch of people who are benefiting from government spending who are voting in the politicians that promise to continue the, the, the gravy train. And, and so, you know, we keep voting ourselves into deeper and deeper financial holes. And the politicians wanting to get elected, they know how to play the game. And it's all about, you know, pandering to uh, the voters uh, with freebies and, and, and propping up your benefactors who benefit from your special interests. And so there's certain legislation that, that helps, uh, you know, certain people at the expense of everybody else. And it all continues until it ultimately collapses. Well, before we uh, get to the break here and we have to let you go, I know you're really busy. And I would imagine that a lot of people want to hear what you have to say today. And I appreciate you coming on. But I tell you, you know, gold and silver, people, I mean, is that still... Uh, if you can't figure it out, you don't want to figure it out, you don't got a degree, it's like, are we still in the buying time? Absolutely. You know, and if you got to buy, because you got to get rid of your dollars. So what are you going to own instead? You know, if you don't want to spend your money right now, which is not a bad idea, if you, you know, if you don't have a lot of money, you just go buy up things that won't spoil, perishable. Uh, but, you know, other than that, you know. Thanks. Sort of Peter Schiff from Europac.net. <laughs> Schiffradio.com. Stay right there, Peter. I'll be right back.